literally saw a fist showed physical fucking evidence that that had a huge impact and hollywood listened to amber heard not once did she say he or a person or any neutral term related to a victim of domestic violence i guess so um i am so fucking far behind i know it's the same old excuse but my job is incessant it's never ending and i i have no work-life balance so when i can I make my videos and when i can't when i'm too exhausted like physically and mentally i don't want to put out shit so i don't do it so i wanted to do a quick video around what we missed from week four of the Depp versus Heard trial. We are currently on week five and fucking hell has there been some bombshells. So I, want, I think I wanna do a completely separate Amber video because we had direct at the end of week four. We had cross this week, which was, it was so good. It was so satisfying for someone to finally say to her what everyone has wanted to say. Um, and then we had redirect, which was an absolute clusterfuck. If you, if you want to make sure you see that, make sure to subscribe. I actually made notes, so you fucking proud of me? <laughs> so that I make sure I get every single person's name correctly. Like I said previously, if you want to make sure that you are not missing any information, make sure to go and watch the actual depositions and the live witness testimonies. Uh, Lauren Order. Lauren Order? <laughs> Hello. Lauren Crime has all of them. I'll link all of the days below so that you can go and check them at your leisure. First of all, we have Travis McGiven. Travis McGiven was one of Johnny Depp's bodyguards. So Sean Bett had already testified in person. Travis McGiven um, had a video deposition. I'm gonna miss out a lot of information. I'm just trying to hit, hit some of the key points. The key point for me about Travis McGiven's testimony was around the stairs incident, the Kate Moss incident. Any other, I don't hesitate, I don't wait. I just, in my head, instantly think of Kate Moss and the stairs, which I will get into in my Amber video. Amber has alleged for a while, one and only time she has ever hit Johnny was when she thought that her sister was going to get knocked down the stairs. Travis McGiven witnessed this interaction. He witnessed Amber throw shit at Johnny before. Uh and at some point I witnessed Miss Heard throw a Red Bull can. They were both on the, the middle level. And I, I saw Miss Heard throw a Red Bull can from her position that struck Mr. Depp in the back. Anything else that you recall? At that point, I moved closer to Mr. Depp. I, I didn't want my client getting hit with anything else. At one point, Miss Heard threw something else, either a purse or some sort of bag or something that she had up there. I was able to knock it away so it didn't hit him. At one point, she spit at him. And this time, he got in between Amber and Johnny. And Whitney... Amber's fucking sister was literally trying to pull Amber off of Johnny because she was going for him. Now, you could say that this witness could be biased because he is literally being paid by Johnny Depp. Considering some of the testimony I've seen this week, like, can people just... Some people saying like, oh, I've only watched this for the past two days and I believe Amber heard because of the witness testimony. You came four weeks late and think that two days worth of testimonies when they're only on Amber is gonna be enough evidence to say like, oh, Amber was definitely a victim. Mate, can we not with this bullshit? But yeah, anyway, so Travis was, got in between and he literally saw a fist. At that point, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a, a fist and an arm come across my right shoulder and a, uh, I heard and saw a closed fist um, contact Mr. Depp in the left side of his face. And whose fist was that? That was Miss Heard's fist, Amber Heard's fist. I'm not kidding. To have the confidence to try assault someone in front of someone else You've got to have some sort of fucking ego. You have got to think that you are physically untouchable. And to be honest, for a while she was, let's be honest. Between 2016 to 2021, she was still getting acting jobs. She was still thought of as the victim by a lot of fucking people. She was untouchable, but she fucking ain't now. 
Next witness, Jack Wiggum. And this was, I want to say Johnny's agent. He worked with Johnny to get Johnny parts, basically. So Jack Wiggum testified that, that it was a lot harder to get Johnny jobs once that article came out that said that he had sexually assaulted her. You know, after, after the op-ed, it was impossible to get him a studio film, which is what we normally would have been focused on in that time period. I'm not surprised that people dropped him, that people didn't want to work with him once someone has sexual assault allegations against them. They're literally like a bomb that's about to go off. You don't want them anywhere near you. So I can understand why these companies would, especially companies that hadn't even taken him on yet, would likely think, do you know what? I don't want anything to do with that person because I have no idea if this is true or not. And if it is, I don't want anything to do with them. I don't know them yet personally. And I'm gonna jump around just a little bit. Douglas. Bannier? He's an IT property expert. He's an expert. He'll be able to look at the internet and look at trends. He was able to see that Johnny, after that article, literally dropped off. He got so much negativity written about him after that time. Was the negativity in between that? Absolutely. Because he was drinking, he was doing drugs, he had, he was getting a divorce, etc. He had these domestic violence claims against him, but that article literally the internet expert showed physical fucking evidence that that had a huge impact against him and his career my overall opinions are you know as i mentioned earlier i wanted to analyze the q scores during this snapshot of time i wanted to understand what they were before during and after the op-ed and what this tells me is his positive q score went from a 35 to a 29 uh, and then his negative went from an 11 to a 15. So what the Q scores is telling me is the public perception of Mr. Depp uh, has been damaged. My opinions are that you know Mr. Depp was not portrayed in a negative connotation prior to the 2016 um, allegations of abuse. And then Mr. Depp's uh, image, uh, he was portrayed in a negative connotation after the 2016 allegations of abuse and then more so uh, after the 2018 Washington Post op-ed. Uh, and then the Q scores represent uh, that, uh, you know, the public thinks he's damaged. And considering this is a defamation lawsuit, not a fucking domestic violence case, this is a defamation case. It might be about domestic violence because of the defamation that he incurred. It is not a domestic violence case. So anyway, then we also had Richard Marks. So Richard Marks was an entertainment attorney and he had worked in the industry for like, I want to say between 20 and 40 years. It, he went th through a whole slew. He went back to like early 1990s when he was like when he first worked for Disney he was literally involved in all of these things as they were happening. Like he was a big part of the entertainment industry and with his expert opinion, he said that the op-ed damaged Mr. Depp, created a cancel situation, if you will, harmed his reputation and ability to get work in the Hollywood industry. Movie studios would want anyone removed so that they can get a return on their investment in our society. So they are not seen as being an old generation where women were not given the benefit of the doubt. Do you have an opinion about the impact of the publication of the op-ed on Mr. Depp's reputation in Hollywood? Uh, it's devastating. It, it's, um, uh, it's, it's the type of claim, the Me, Me Too claim of se sexual violence, domestic abuse, that has canceled a list of, of, uh, of actors. Uh, Chris Noth recently, I just read something about Frank Langella uh, we know uh, uh, newscasters, uh, Les Moonves, uh, head of ABC, CBS, uh, now Johnny Depp is uh, in their ranks. It's, it's devastating, the coin. But the op-ed that didn't mention Mr. Depp at all and didn't mention any accusations that what happened to her, that's what caused Mr. Depp reputational, all his reputational harm? That's what you're saying? Well, I don't agree that uh, this article was not about did Mr. it mention Depp? Mr. Depp? That's what I asked you. Uh, uh, well, did you, does she have another husband who abused her? But in did it talk about it? Did it talk? And that is literally, as he said, that is literally what that op-ed said. That op-ed said that you don't believe me as a woman who apparently was abused. 
you still believe and are supporting my abuser. That is what that fucking article said. And Hollywood listened to Amber Heard, even though she was... Even though there is a lot of fucking evidence to show that she is the abuser. And Hollywood dropped Depp. Then we have Erin Flaherty. She was Amber's personal fucking nurse. Now, the reason this is so important is because in Amber's testimony, which I know I said I'd get into Amber's thing, but this is really important. She explained being apparently, allegedly, raped with a bottle by Johnny Depp. Johnny had the bottle inside of me. And was shoving it inside of me over and over again. She also said that during this whole thing in Australia, when all of this happened, there was so much broken glass everywhere. She had loads of cuts over her feet and her hands and her arms. This nurse didn't see any of this whatsoever. It says here that the client had visible bright red blood appearing at center of lower lip. Do you see that? Yes. Did you, um, other than the blood on Ms. Hart's leg, do you recall seeing any other injuries to her on that date? I don't recall other than what I state. If you have cuts on your feet, first of all, there would be blood all over everywhere you walk. And especially with alcohol all over the floor. I recently just watched Swoop's video regarding this and it, she made such a good point. If you had any cuts and you get alcohol on it, oh my God, is that gonna be so fucking painful? All those cuts on her feet, her arms, whatever. Um, how did she not need stitches? How did she not need any medical attention? And yet there was Ben King, Jerry Judge, um, Dr. Kipper, like there were so many people there and no one saw or did anything. Like, I don't care how much you apparently don't care about someone. You would let them bleed out on their, through their feet and their arms, etc. And Ben King literally saw her the following day and saw nothing. The nurse did not see any of these apparent black eyes, broken noses. The embellishment is fucking ridiculous. I hate to say it, but this is why now she has put the Me Too movement back 10 fucking years. Because now every single time that someone comes out and says that I was abused, I was assaulted, I was raped. Any time that happens, people are going to be questioned. Unfortunately, you, everyone's going to have the benefit of the doubt again. The last thing I want to get into, just in this quick roundup, before I do the Amber video next, is her psychologist. Dawn Hughes. I don't know if she's a doctor. I'm assuming she's a doctor because she's a psychologist. She came off incredibly sexist and the cross-examination highlighted this the exact thing that every single other person in that courtroom or listening to her realized the second she started talking not once did she say he or a person or any neutral term related to a victim of domestic violence not once every time it was she or her pronouns every fucking time she you said we were going to have to pay attention to gendered stereotypes and then you testified at length where you referenced both men and women you paid attention to those stereotypes during the course of your testimony you can't assume all the time that the male is the perpetrator and the female is the victim you have to go into the evaluation understanding that the male also could be the victim of intimate partner violence and every time you referred to the characteristic of a victim of intimate partner violence yesterday, you used the pronouns she or her, didn't you? I was using the she and her pronouns in this case because my determination was, as I stated, that Ms. Hurd was the victim of intimate partner violence. That is why I was using the she, her pronouns. She was so clearly biased to any woman of domestic violence. Someone can hear I'm getting angry. <laughs> Hi, sweetie, I'm sorry, I'll be done in a minute, it's okay. You can tell when I'm getting upset and you can tell when I'm getting angry. She also needed her notes to refer and confirm what tests that she did with Amber. 
I'm concerned in my cheat sheet of the dates that I saw Ms. Heard so that I could accurately um, report to the court. However, Dr. Curry, Depp's psychologist or forensic scientist, I can't remember her title, I'm sorry. Dr. Curry went through a lot of information and not once did she need to look down at notes. But Dawn Hughes did and said that, oh, it's, well, it's not a memory test. Well, it's funny that she was not able to recite what test she did, which surely she must do on a maybe daily basis, but I'm sure she deals with that a lot more often than listening to Amber's story over and over and over and over and over again over all of her career because um, she was able to recite all of Amber's experiences by heart without looking at any notes. Early on in Dr. Bonnie Jacobs' notes, um, where when Mr. Depp was drunk or high, he threw her on the bed, ripped off her nightgown, and tried to have sex with her. Does that not seem extremely fucking sus? The very clever last comment that Cross left on was that she admitted that Johnny Depp could have been abused. You cannot testify that Johnny Depp was not abused, can you? I, I can testify that he had physical acts of violence perpetrated on him as well as psychological aggressive acts perpetrated upon him. It took a lot fucking longer than it should have, but she admitted that. That's what we're up to. Like I said, I will do a video on the direct, the cross, and the redirect um, regarding Amber Heard because I feel like that deserves like its whole own video because that was absolutely fucking crazy. I also have like a theory about Amber which I think is going to be a little bit controversial. So if you want to see my theory about Amber and her friends and how I think this got to the way it did where she literally had friends freeloading off him for ages, make sure to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. Um, I, I will do a week five recap after I've done the Amber video. If you want me to do these like faster, quick recaps, let me know. A lot of this week, bar Amber, has been like either quick testimony or quick depositions. So I probably could do another video for this for week five. Moving the Amber part, because the Amber part's gonna take a very fucking long time. If you wanna see that, make sure to let me know in a comment. Um, but I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye.